my name is Wiley Wiggins. Uh, the first, uh, I guess, professional acting job I had was uh, when I was eight years old. I was on uh, this really terrible PBS show called uh, The Perkins Family. That was uh, all imp It was all kids, all child cast. You can imagine this, and it was all improv. And it was supposed to be a serious, dramatic, like a soap opera. And it was almost absolutely unwatchable by anyone other than the families of the children involved in it. <clears throat> and um, didn't really think about acting at all growing up. And just sort of randomly got picked off the drag when they were um, detour film production was looking for extras for Days of Confused. And I had long hair and a funny name, so I guess I was really good. Um Yeah, I mean, even after being in a couple of movies, I've ne I haven't really ever tried to pursue acting as a career. It's kind of like trying to make a career in being hit by lightning. You know, it's not. <laughs> it's like great if it happens, but I can't imagine expecting the same kind of luck year after year. Even when I was getting to do a movie every every year or two in like mid to late '90s, I actually did a bunch of crappy movies that nobody has seen. Um, I, I've always had to have day jobs. Right now, I'm a, a web designer at a company that's a subsidiary of AT&T. I worked at Apple for years uh, doing uh, pro application support for Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro. Sorry thanks, my friend Dia Sokol, who produced uh, a couple of Andrew Bajowski's movies um, and has done some direction for TV. She, uh, she never talks about this because maybe she's embarrassed, but I think it's kind of awesome. Did you ever see the episode of Wife Swap? with the crazy obese Christian woman who's like missing teeth that's shrieking about being a warrior for God. It's amazing. It's like the one transcendent uh, uh, episode of this otherwise completely horrible show, but she directed that. It was the, the, the highest rated episode of Wife Swap. You know, she's, she's produced a bunch of, of movies that, and um, she just kind of randomly called me and asked if I wanted to be in a movie with a bunch of um, first time actors. And we shot it in San Francisco, uh, November, of uh, 2007, mostly in the Mission District. Um, a lot of the cast are from San Francisco. The, actually, I think the only two people that weren't um, from around that area were me and um, Andrew Bujowski, who plays my friend in the movie. Um, yeah, and we just went in and shot it. Incredibly minimal crew. It was like usually about a crew of five. Um, it was a lot of fun. Well, I don't, I mean, I'm not a technical actor. I don't do a lot of, like, anything particularly imp conventionally impressive. I can't tap dance or speak in weird accents or anything. So usually what I try and do whenever I'm doing any kind of acting is I just sort of play myself, but I'm reductive. Like, I, instead of adding things to the character, I just take things away from myself. So the character that I play in the movie acts a whole lot like me, except he's an insufferable bastard who... <laughs> uh, morally questionable things happen in this movie. It's superficially charming, but uh, he's kind of up to no good and uh, manages to rationalize a lot of really childish behavior. Yeah, he, he his behavior kind of borders on autistic at times. I, I kept asking the director what the hell is wrong with this guy and she could never give me a, a good... Uh, Honestly, I think you're kind of an asshole, Max. <laughs> what are you it's talking true. about? I'm not an asshole. You're not? Good explanation. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's, without giving too much away, he's, uh, he's had an indiscretion, he's in a committed relationship, he's had an indiscretion with a woman who's completely not right for him, doesn't really like him much, they're just, we're just kind of drunk, um, and, but he becomes obsessed with her for absolutely no good reason. Mainly, mainly because I think he just craves approval, and he's already got his really awesome girlfriend's approval. What's going on with Sarah? Sarah's doing really good. She just got a haircut. She got her bangs cut. It looks really good. And so he has to go seeking this woman that wants nothing to do with him. Uh, my friend Steve Garcia is a old school Austin punk rock band dude who's been around forever. He was in a band called the Black Lipstick for a long time. It was the owners of Peekaboo Records band. Um, he's been in a bunch of bands around town. He, I met him through my friends uh, who are in a band called the Octopus Project. 
and uh, we just sort of started hanging out socially. Um, I was not playing music at the time. Steve Garcia was telling me, well, you know, I, I'd like to start a new band that would with some organ in it. And I told him, well, I don't know. I don't really know if I could play in a band. I don't really, you know, I'm not really a musician. And uh, his response was, well, you know, you can learn how to play the keyboard. You can't really learn how to not be an asshole. It's been really good. We've been playing for a couple of years. It's a lot of fun. We got to tour with uh, our friends Octopus Project uh, over the summer, um, all up the West Coast um, to Seattle and Montana and back. Um, and yeah, it's been really fun. Um, for a while, we were having fun. Uh, we came up with this. We were calling it uh, uh, Prog Garage Prog because <laughs> because it gets kind of noodly and and overindulgent, but at the same time, it's pretty, pretty lo-fi. Um, so, you know, it's garagey, a little, little bit of psychedelia. We've been introducing more kind of surfy 60s sounds into it with a, a new lead guitarist that we've been playing with for most of the last year. So, so when I say interaction design, uh, I separate that from traditional, like, web design or graphic design in that um, I think a lot of the stuff you see now with interfaces, um, like uh, a lot of a lot of game interfaces, like if you, you pick up a Wii now or uh, uh, Xbox 360, or a lot of game design or a lot of web design, it's moved past just like this is what it looks like. Here's where the elephants, or the elements uh, are. To you know, how do I interact with it? Like the Wii, for instance, has has uh, haptic feedback. Like when you mouse over something with the controller, it buzzes you. You're you're, you're feeling this interface out in space. So that's the kind of stuff I'm getting into. I'm, I'm moving past just kind of basic web design to I'm learning a, a programming language called Processing right now. That was a variant of Java that was written for more for artists and like multimedia people, um, game people, to be able to sketch out ideas in code quickly of uh, interactive stuff without you know getting bogged down in a, a kind of lower level programming language. So I'm learning that. I'm learning something. Apple provides something called Quartz Composer with their developer tools. That's really good for doing interactive video. What's it? Um, I was doing a lot of project, like live projections for bands. I did some stuff for Octopus Project, and I'm doing some stuff for our band now. And I've moved past just playing stuff off a of DVD to I'm doing some actual live mixing of uh, video off a computer. So that I, I think about that when I think about the way I'm interacting with video as if it's like an instrument. Uh, I think about interaction design there. So designing interactions between a person and the, the tools they're using. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to South by Southwest this year. Um, I'm on the advisory panel for interactive. There's uh, a few panels for that I think that are going to be pretty good. I need to go back over the list of recommend specific ones, but my friend Karina Longworth, who's a, um, a writer for Spout Blog, I know is doing a panel that's um, for both film and interactive uh, movies. My friend Andrew Bajowski's movie, who's in Sorry Thanks With Me, Beeswax, is coming out. Uh, Alex Karpovsky, who was in um, Andrew's last movie, um, Beeswax, has a movie that's coming out. It's like kind of incestuous, actually. It's like a lot of people that have helped each other out in their like, no-budget indie movies for free or for pizza. Everybody, everybody uh, gets to go see each other's movies. Um, Fantastic Fest uh, is a really awesome festival every year that uh, is put on by Tim Lee from Alamo Draft House and uh, a couple other Austin festival folks and people from South by Southwest. They're going to have a presence at the uh, South by Southwest this year. There's some movies that I'm looking forward to there. There's one called The Horseman, I think, that uh, looks like a pretty good traditional bloody revenge uh, movie that I'm looking forward to. Um, the uh, Objectified is a pretty interesting looking documentary about industrial design. It's, I think they talked a lot with Jonathan Ive, who's an uh, industrial designer for Apple. I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, just as many parties and as much free booze as I can get my hands on, I guess. <laughs>